Hey guys, I'm finally back on the video guide series. Uh, we're going to move on to the next engineer now. This is my Salarian engineer. This is the heavy weapon wielding power class I spoke of before. See, now back in the day, the Salarian engineer was the golden boy. Back when, the, when it was all about farming Geth on Firebase White and his decoy was an absolute must. Now, it's an absolute bust. It really is. A lot of people don't know how to play the Salarian Engineer anymore, and they can be forgiven for completely overlooking the character because I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Pretty much every other Engineer is better. Um, although, despite the fact that nobody cares about the decoy anymore, I'm still going to recommend that you uh, spec into it. I mean, it's the character's niche, after all. There's no reason to play with just Energy Drain Incinerate. If you want to go with Electric and Fire combo... Just about every engineer is going to bring a stronger combination than those two, okay? But the decoy still has its uses, even though it's not technically as a decoy. <laughs> if you stick with me and I'll explain. Now, he does have energy drain. This is a cool power. Uh, if you go with radius in the first evolution, we've got some nice crowd control there. We can stun a, you know, a group of enemies with that. And then there's drain in the next evolution. That's going to get us some 50% of our shields back when we attack any kind of shielded or barriered enemy or any synthetic. And then finally, I'm going to recommend armor boost. This gives us a 40% damage reduction for 10 seconds when we attack those enemies I just spoke of. So this actually allows us to front line a lot more than most... Um, most engineers in the game, they're quite a squishy class in general, but you'll be surprised just how well this guy can do out in the front lines. Now, decoy, I'm going to recommend you put three points into it. There's really not worth specking into any of these evolutions. I mean, it does less damage than the drone. It can be thrown... Well, you can't be thrown. It can be placed in front of you. So it's not really good for crowd control. And as I said, so many enemies just plain ignore it now. But uh, even with the three, first three points in it, it does have a duration of 20 seconds and 1,000 shields. This is going to be fine for what we're going to be using it for, but I'll get into that in the gameplay, okay? For Incinerate, this is going to be how we're going to be chewing for the big armor targets. So we're just going to go with damage, burning damage, and armor damage. And then for the Salarian Operative, we're going to be focusing more on weapons, uh, our weapon damage output. Because as I said, those are really softening up powers. They're not going to be our killers, you know. So just go for weapon damage. Take power damage for the next evolution, though, because we're still using them. And then you want more weapon damage for your final evolution. And this leaves us with enough um, points to, in, to go into uh, durability and shield recharge with our fitness, okay? Now, the gun I'm slapping on this character is the Claymore. Because the Claymore is great. <laughs> it's just an absolutely fantastic uh, gun. And we're going to be able to just sort of throw a power in between uh, every time we reload the gun. And we're really just going to chew through every enemy in the game. I mean, we've got energy drain. So literally anything you shoot the Claymore at that hasn't got shields is going to die. And that's why this is going to work really well. I'm going to recommend any kind of hard-hitting gun like that. So the Claymore is going to be awesome. You can also use the Crusader if you can make that thing work and um, also you're going to go with something like the growl uh, the raider Rafe's still amazing of course but it's a nice a bit lighter weight and the glef the geth plasma shotguns are really good on this character too but yeah i'm sticking with the claymore i'm going to slap the uh high the smart choke on it and the high velocity barrel really great mods for this gun um you know, you don't have to go with shotguns, though. There are plenty of other hard-hitting guns. With the pistols, you've got the Talon. I mean, that is just awesome. You can always go with the Talon. Uh, the Arc pistols uh, <laughs> overlooked quite a lot. I mean, you when you charge up the, the Arc pistol, it does hit really hard, actually. And um, strangely enough, it pierces and all that kind of good stuff. So you can go with the Arc pistol. Um, and also, there's the new bad boy in town, the Executioner Pistol. This thing does hit hard, but only on very specific targets. I tried, uh, as you might see by the mods I slapped on it, I put the heavy barrel and the uh, new pistol power magnifier. I thought that would work a charm for him. Um, unfortunately, no, not really. Uh, the Executioner Pistol does dick to shields and barriers. I mean, literally nothing to them. Whereas it will chew through armor like a champion. And it's because of that major fall back um that i wouldn't recommend it actually because energy drain well does do a decent job of stripping shields but it's not an excellent job of stripping shields you, you you might not even take them all all the shields off a marauder with a single energy drain especially since we're not really specking for power damage either 
and even with that power magnifier on it, it just doesn't seem to get the job done. You might want to go with the, the executioner pistol, but I would recommend phasic rounds on it so that you can just sort of go through the shield gating and start chewing because it will kill health and armor. It really will. But it's also got kind of a weird hit detection. Um, I'm gonna think I'm, I've still got builds that I think can work the executioner pistol really well, but I'm not going to recommend it for the Solarian engineer. Um, obviously, you can go with um, a series of um, assault rifles. They are always going to work. Something really, you know, real chewers and damage uh, damage over time kind of guns like the Harrier are always going to work. They really will. Uh, you can also go with uh, the new Lancer. Uh, that's going that does great damage actually. And because we can front line so well with this character, as I will show you in the gameplay, it's going to be really nice that we won't have to run off and go and get ammo or anything like that. So I'm going to recommend the Harrier or the Lancer in the Assault Rifle category. But you know, obviously, you if you are a bit flaky about being uh, you know, so in the thick of it with such a squishy kind of character, you can snipe really nicely with this character. I mean, the Black Widow is going to get the job done. Uh, the Valiant's always nice. It is a really nice sniper rifle. Uh, the Widow, of course, is just kind of more Claymore in uh, gameplay. And then the Keyshock is going to be fantastic. I mean, this thing's a boss... Uh, Phantom Killer, it really is. You throw your incinerate at them, they're going to put up their stupid little bubble, and then one charge shot from the key shock is going to wipe them out. But um, that's it. I'm going to stick with the Claymore, and uh, let's look at some of the gear I'm going to recommend now. Now, for the ammo, I'm going to recommend that we, you're really just going for damage here rather than trying to set up any kind of fancy explosion. So stick with your armor piercing or your drill rounds. Warp is also fantastic. You can't go wrong with warp ammo. And, you know, the phasic rounds can work on some of those guns, especially if you're, not, if you're struggling to get through the shields and everything. You can go with phasic rounds. For your armor uh, bonus, though, we are going to be in the thick of it, so I'm going to recommend a cyclonic modulator and a good one, too. Take your threes and your fours. You can take a power amplifier, although I wouldn't recommend it. You'd probably be better off with power efficiency, because we are lugging a heavy-ass gun into this game. Uh, your gear bonus, you can take any kind of weapon amp to sort of benefit whatever you decided to bring onto the battlefield, but I'm going to go ahead and use the Omni Capacitors. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Because obviously that's going to give me nice tech damage boost and a power recharge boost, most importantly. Okay, So that's going to complement me really nicely on the battlefield. I'm also, you can go with shields and stuff if you're a bit flaky about the whole idea concept I'm throwing at you here. There's obviously your shield boosters and your stronghold packages and uh, your survivor loadout. But then you can also just go with structural ergonomics too for get that power recharge. Because that's what's most important. Then you stick on the rail lamp that's going to best suit you. And then we're going to jump into the gameplay. Alright, here we go. Rocking Firebase Reactor Hazard with uh, Dominoes and two pugs here. If you saw any like my uh, test drive videos of the Reckoning characters, you've seen me on this map before. But I haven't done it for the video guide series, so I'm going to just knock that one out here. Dom's going to sense the opportunity, however, and bring out his infamous troll build. He uh, essentially just takes out a Krogan Battlemaster and slaps him green. Uh, <laughs> and then strives to ruin your day, and he's... Uh, quite efficient at it unfortunately I mean Krogan's can be one hell of a troll build um, to be honest there's no friendly fire so if like a teammate gets in your way they just absorb um, all your damage for you and uh, Krogan so big and clunky they do that quite well Fortunately, Dom's not going to be playing that card today. Um, he's also quite partial to uh, taking objectives away from the LZ and stuff like that and completely sabotaging the mission. But there is still reckoning stuff to be unlocked, so he's going to be on slightly better behaviour and we are going to crack on through this. Literally, do, when he whips out that Krogan Battlemaster, don't let him do <laughs> objectives and stuff. Um, yeah, but let's crack on with this. I'm rocking this. Salarian Engineer... Um, and what you're going to see me do, essentially, is energy drain and claymore all things. Because <laughs> if it hasn't got shields, the claymore's going to kill it. Now, as you can see there, um, energy drain will not always take the, like, the entire shields of um, certain enemies. But uh, what it does more importantly, however, is stun them. It, it, it stuns the enemy, and I've got a nice clear shot on them. And then literally a headshot's going to just wipe them out completely. And that's going to literally be my approach with like all uh, MOOC enemies. It's only going to be the armoured targets, I mean the big ones, that I'm going to hit with incinerate and whittle them down, as well as uh, ploughing the claymore pellets, to be honest. 
and that's really all you need to do. Uh, <laughs> that, that is that is the gameplay. Um, but you, what you need to take into note, though, is with the whole energy drain, is it does give me that damage reduction. So I'm able to sort of front line like this with a claymore. I, I've got a nice forty percent damage reduction there. And um, the decoy is also going to make it, uh, going to have its role in all of this. It's going to help me survive a lot out there because the uses it does have now, uh, it still does work as a sort of um, aggro obtainer uh, for like the Geth and Phantoms. You know, you see those kind of enemies out on the playing field. You stick your decoy out, and they're going to go for it, and it's going to leave them open for you to just take out. Although, what I would actually recommend against the Phantom is just throwing Incinerate at her, because any of those uh, traveling projectile powers will make her put up a bubble, and then she's just open to weapon fire. Um. But the Geth, yeah, always <laughs> go go for it. Literally put your decoy out for the Geth. They love those things. Um, but what it does, it, it just acts as a really great damage sponge, uh, essentially. That's what it's going to help me out for. It can completely eat um, Banshee Warp Balls, Atlas Missiles, uh, the Geth Pulse. I guess we're going to call it the Siege Pulse these days now we've all had a play with the Juggernaut. Uh, it will eat some of them. Although, the, of course, those attacks have like a big area of effect, uh, so you don't want to be close to your decoy when that's happening. But that's what I'm going to, you'll see me do in this gameplay. If I'm taking on a Banshee, I'm going to put a decoy out, and basically I'm going to hope that that thing's going to take the warp ball for me. And then I can strip her barriers with energy drain, get the damage reduction, and then just plow her with the claymore and uh, it's going to be a really efficient way of just taking on everything the game has to throw at me it's um it is a shame that the decoy really is kind of lackluster though um like i said so many enemies just completely ignore it it's really no good for crowd control anymore um its damage output is pitiful. I mean, it's worse than the, than the drone, and you can't cast it at enemies like you can with the drone. It's like, see that cannibal I just, uh, you know, zapped then? I could literally throw the drone behind him, but with the decoy, it's always just going to be a couple of feet in front of me. Um, so, yeah, it's just not really not going to work out for you in that respect. And I could really use um, something to take the aggro off me in this game. I am going to get swarmed in this game. The enemy fucking love me they really do and it, it does seem to be a me thing i mean it doesn't matter if i'm hosting or wherever i am on that scoreboard which you know essentially that's how i always kind of seen it normally if you're if you're at the top of the scoreboard the enemy tried to take you out um essentially i think that's how they're programmed they you know, obviously if they take out the team's strongest player the team's going to struggle without them um and you know the t and then the enemy are going to win aren't they but uh, no, I, it's it's actually kind of wrecking Cerberus for me right now. Uh, it really is. They're, they're doing my head in because one thing I'm I'm getting all the time now is I'm just having Atlas missiles fly at me from all corners. I, I don't even see the big massive mech uh, <laughs> anymore. I just get hit by missiles in the back of the head or from the side and all this kind of annoying shit. Plus the Phantoms just taking me out with that like a little hand cannon thing before I even know she's on the map like a, I, I really am just a big aggro sponge I'm probably the best decoy you can ever have because the enemy love to go for me and I am going to get swarmed quite a bit in this game but fortunately due to all my sort of uh, nice survivability that I got with this character I'm going to pull through just fine because <laughs> I'm sure you were worried <laughs> No, really, my true enemy in this game is going to be Dom. <laughs> i got to watch my ass every time I'm in that reactor because he's, he's going to set that thing off constantly in an attempt to bake me. You might have seen that, uh, that Paul pug just drop suddenly in between a wave. What on earth killed the pug? It was the troll that killed the pug. He fucking baked him in an attempt to get me. So I went and revived his ass. Um, yeah, i got to keep my eye on Dom this game. <laughs> he's literally my worst enemy. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we keep it interesting, guys. Uh, we just wind each other up all the time. <laughs> You've got to have a sense of humour to play with dominoes. That's, that's what I'm going to warn anybody who ever may encounter him in a sort of pug lobby. <laughs> or if you make the foolish mistake of becoming his friend. <laughs> yeah, he brings, his, uh, he brings his battle master out from under the bridge to torment you. <laughs> 
now and again. Although he was having a melee day today. He's been playing all his melee characters, trying to get some uh, nice footage for his own video series that he's starting now called The Banshee Screams of the Week. Um, apart from the fact that it has Banshee Screams separating each of his clips, it really has nothing to do with Banshee Screams. It's a bunch of uh, funny clips that we've he's managed to gain from just recording us over the week. It's, uh, it's definitely worth a look at. There's some funny stuff that he manages to put together, actually, um... This last week, last week was a good laugh. Uh, sometimes it's it's funny to see things from Dom's perspective. Sometimes it really is, and he likes to record all our voices and stuff. So you've sort of got that kind of live commentary thing going on, but it's not really about that. It is just about the lols, and it's worth checking it out. Maybe if I do something nice like this for him, you'll stop giving me so much stick. <laughs> Although I doubt it. But yeah, I hope you can see, um, literally just energy drain and claymore is pretty much uh, wiping the floor with the enemy, um, it really is, and I've got incinerate to take on these big armour targets, because, um, you know, it's the, with the claymore it's all about reload cancelling to get the best uh, out of that gun, and um, nothing. And he's just got two great powers to do it with, I mean, because you literally are, you're, you're stunning, staggering the enemy with while you're reloading your gun, and obviously then, once they're in that situation, your next attack is going to be be the killer and um and, and then when i'm dealing with the armor targets and i'm just putting i'm just doing damage over time in between my major claymore hits so it's just it is a really uh powerful build actually it's worth checking it out giving it a go i mean the, the slaying engineer isn't dead <laughs> he's not dead he's just changed we've all we've all we've all changed um, also want to let you guys know as well, obviously um, I'm back on the video guide series now. That doesn't mean I'm really going to be I'm done covering the Reckoning stuff. Obviously there's still a lot of weapons for me to unlock and stuff. Uh, I haven't got the Blood Pack uh, Punisher yet. I don't have the Geth Spitfire, although I, I could go without, to be honest, from what I've heard. <laughs> and um, I, don't have the, I still don't have the Venom Shotgun, and I do want to get my hands on that one. Um, I think that's all the I got the Lancer too though. Loving that. Loving that gun. Uh, it's really cool. Um but yeah, obviously this this all this kind of stuff's gonna come into play with uh, some of my new builds I think. So uh obviously I I'll I'll keep you updated on everything new with the game. I'm gonna keep my eyes on the oof. <laughs> Almost um Almost. Uh, no, I'm going to keep my eyes on the balance changes, especially with that Talon Mercenary, because um, I really think that's going to go ahead, actually, what that rumour I heard about it, that he getting completely revamped. I think that's going to happen. Although, I'll tell you what is crazy. Can you believe it? These are the only two Solarians in the game. And that's all we're getting. That's all we're getting, guys. We ain't getting any more. I'm going to break off for a second, though, because this is, a, this is another great feature for the decoy that I forgot to mention. Um... It's not going to take a load of aggro for you, but it's going to take some, and that's more than most characters get. So this is going to be really helpful for device uh, objectives, and so is it going to be helping you with uploads and hacks and all that kind of stuff. It can also help you out with when you're carrying the pizza, obviously. You can sort of stick that out and take... Just, it, literally, you've got some really great methods of survivability with this character. So don't be afraid to do objectives and get really stuck in with him. But yeah, this, it, despite how great our two Solarian characters are, this is all we're getting. Uh, it's crazy to um, <laughs> think that there is only one more Solarian unit in this war than there are collectors. <laughs> crazy, right? Really thought we'd see like a, a set Solarian soldier or sentinel in in the this last DLC, but we're not going to get it. Now here's a thing: like this is me getting swarmed here, just brutes flying in from behind now. Uh... Gotta watch those brutes, I swear to god, they've, their charge is just so much larger than it used to be. Larger than I remember, they always seem to catch me by surprise. <coughs> they just fly in from miles, it seems. Um, they, uh, I don't remember them having that distance in that attack, but I think it's fair to say now that if they're doing that attack at you, that means they can reach you, so be prepared to dodge them any time they come charging, because they go for miles now. I mean, the only update to the brute I was ever aware of is the increase to their armour. Don't know if I've covered it already, but the, th the trick with the brutes is to literally aim for all the soft spots. Uh, don't shoot any of the armoured plating on him. Uh, it's like the shoulder plating and the belly plating can actually be shot off, and that does uh, do a nice um, spike of damage to the, the brutes and stuff. And obviously, um, I think the chest then becomes a really a weak spot for him. 
But it, what, but that big claw hand of him, he has this major damage reduction when you're shooting there. So you just kind of want to avoid it. But we're cracking on to wave 7 now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start nuking spawns. The tactics for um, reactor is pretty much the same uh, as the normal reactor. The only thing that changes is obviously that the fact that you can literally set the reactor off. Um, for the longest time, wasn't really convinced that was a hazard unless you're playing with Dom, <laughs> to be honest, because it was something under our control that we could use to sort of whittle down the enemy. But uh, no, I've done some solo games on this map, and that reactor will go off on its own accord, actually, which surprised me. Um, I got baked in there when I was doing a device. I, I really had no idea. There's like a voiceover, uh, like a voice recording going on in the background of this map. Maybe it might be worth listening to her more. She might call it out, but uh, I never heard it. Um, but yeah. So careful of the reactor when it's, if it's been left on fully charged for a while, it could close on you. But essentially, what you're really going to get you is your teammate. To be honest, um, it's just, what's annoying though is the fact that the enemy will just waltz right through the door when it closes. It, there is no door as far as the enemy is concerned. We can't do that. <laughs> when the doors close, we're stuck in there. But the enemy just waltz right through it. They just come right through the wall. It's uh, kind of ridiculous. And when they do get ca trapped inside, it does. Shit all damage to be honest. It will bake you need to be like a juggernaut. Hang on, I'm gonna snap off here. Hit hit by the warp ball, but now look, I'm gonna stick the decoy out on it and it is going to eat that next warp ball. And then I can use energy drain in to get my nice damage reduction, I can take another hit. So there is this is what I'm talking about with the Serene Engineer. There is some really great survivability with the character. But yeah, what is going on with the the the, the reactor? It's like it, it does it does no damage to the enemy. To be honest, it it, it is just a little help. It just whittles them down, weakens them a bit. Although um, it does uh, change up the map a bit, obviously, because people do like to take advantage of the reactor and try and get the enemy in there. So normally you gotta just. You really want to communicate more on this map with your t with your teammates because oh, there's fucking autoway making me attack swarmers. <laughs> Thank God for pellet spread of shotguns. Um, you know, because obviously you don't want to get yourself trapped in there because your teammate was trying to kill a husk. Uh, yeah. And also, it really works well for the extraction wave as well. It's all about bunkering down at the back here. This is a really great place to hold down. And obviously, when you're sort of um, Choke, choke hold in the enemy uh, to that point. You can obviously throw in a couple of um, reactor baking on them, so you know it's all good stuff. Uh, the reactor hazard map is kind of cool. I do like it. Uh, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's obviously there's all this new reckoning stuff. I'm going to be slapping that on different builds. I'm still going to try and get that ex executioner pistol to work. I mean, it's got great potential. It really does, and I think I got a build for it. You'll see that in the video guide series. Though this is all going to be in the video guide series. Keep you guys updated. From what I hear, the Blood Pack Punisher is basically an SMG version of the Executioner Pistol, where it does tons of armor damage, but dick all to um, shields and barriers. Um, what are you going to do? Uh, the Geth Spitfire is frequently described as the Typhoon's <laughs> runt. To be honest, the runt of the litter as far as like mini guns go. Uh, so I can't say I'm excited about that. I still haven't really played with the uh, um, the Adder synthetic rifle, although I've heard it's got some nice uh, sort of staggering to it, a lot of stopping power. That could work on some builds. I'm going to play with all this, and if it works out, you're going to see it in my video guide series. Anything that's worth trying out, I'm going to tell you about. Like you might have seen my Asari Adept video that I released last, um, where I stuck, I've stuck the suppressor on and out, and that thing works like a boss on the Asari Adept. It really does. Uh, see, now we've just got marauders crawling out the woodwork here, so I'm going to just plow into the reactor and try and take them out. There's going to be so many more marauders in here than I thought, though. <laughs> there really is a ton of them. But who are they working for? <laughs> Seems like it's all too convenient a trap, this was. So I'm going to try and take out this marauder. I know I'm getting shot from a different direction. There's a guy behind me. I'm going to take him on. And then this guy came out of nowhere. But at this point, it was too late. Can you see the culprit? <laughs> there's Dom. And there's the door. Yeah, he got me. <laughs> oh, bastard. <laughs> I want to know who the marauders were working for. I really do. But yeah, let's go ahead and stick it back into the game, nuke that spawn, crack on. Uh, 
I mean, uh, one of the most important updates is going to have to be that Talon Mercenary, um, to be honest. Because I, th I really think the rumours I've heard from friends that he's going to be legit. I mean, there's no way they can leave him like that. <laughs> there just isn't. He's, he's not. He's just not the character he was clearly designed to be. No, uh, I'm going to get swarmed here, and I'm going to have to use another rocket because the enemy love me. And this tastes real good. Uh, <laughs> And that's nice as well. I'm rocking six rockets these days. I, I'm still frequently forgetting about them. It's like I'm just in wave now going, oh, hello. I can take out another spawn here. Dealing with all this kind of pressure, especially when this one, I'm going to fail to sort of back away from this banshee. It's all these nooks and boxes and stuff sort of blocking my path in these corridors around reactors. It's kind of um, dodgy, really. <laughs> and then I'm going to get swarmed again. See, now I've got the brute coming in, so I'm going to try and back from in. And there's a Ravenger. It's like, oh, where did they come from? Didn't I just nuke this place? But there you go. Then Dom's going to come over, not to my rescue. He's, <laughs> this is Dom sees the opportunity to res me right into a banshee. <laughs> but... Calm as a bitch. <laughs> and Dom's going to get grabbed by her instead. <laughs> and then we're going to clean up. Wave done. <laughs> I knew it was pointless medi gelling. It was either going to. I'm either going to have to have Dom let it get his lols, or I'm just going to do it to myself. But then we got the uh, objective here. And I'm going to just re remember oh, hang on, Dom, you're the Krogan. You take this thing, just headbutt to victory. And he's going to go, yeah, all right then. And then he's going to refuse to go through the reactor. He's going, Dom, it's not even charged. No, he's going to take his big ass all around the outskirts of the map rather than just take the, the quick route right down the middle as clear as a day just because he fears <laughs> revenge. I'm not going to lie to you guys. If he was in there, I absolutely would have baked him. <laughs> But then, no, I'm going to use my great powers of aggravation over here, and I'm just going to try and keep the enemy on this side of the map, and it's going to work, um, whether I like it or not. <laughs> got the Banshee at the moment, but they're all going to flood in soon. So, yeah, I got the decoy out a bit late there, but that would have just... That's how it works, really. I can just throw the decoy out when I see her warp ball coming, and it is just going to eat it for me. Uh, but yeah, the Salarian Engineer character, he's still worth playing and he's still worth holding on to his niche. Because um, if you don't do that, then he isn't worth playing, to be honest. You can, you'll can, you do far better with uh, any other kind of engineer with a fire and electrical attack. Oh, but you look at them all. I am completely surrounded, so I'm going to whip out one of my six rockets here and clean that one up. You really want to kind of save a clean-up rocket until after you've seen the whole money thing come up. You'll obviously tell they'll tell you you've, the time you finished and the bonus credits you get for that, and then it's going to tell you the credits you got. Once that message is gone, that's when you kind of want to do a clean-up missile if you're going to do one at all. Because if you do it any sooner, those enemies are just going to respawn. They they are, and then you have to deal with them again anyway. Good if you're after points, but no good, you know, in any other respect. But we're going to hold here and try and choke the enemy towards us, and we got the reactor to toast them if they have, when they do. <clears throat> but yeah, um, obviously this is the video guy series. He's going to be cracking on. I'm going to keep you updated with anything reckoning as I as I go along, and anything from reckoning that works, I'm going to let you know. Um, I'm still playing around with them, working on that reckoning banner. Um, so I've been playing with all the guys again. Um, I'll be honest with you, my, I think my uh, ED build's not going to change. <laughs> it's not going to change. That thing is far too effective. Uh, there's no reason to do it. If anything, it's making me try to change my human infiltrator build so that he's got his own little niche, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's just too effective. Um, she, I wouldn't be surprised if she sees a nerf, to be honest. But the only nerf she really deserves is to the repair matrix. That kind of if they reduce the, the, the duration in which that thing works, uh, yeah, I could completely understand them doing that. Other than that, she's just a simple, uh, effective uh, infiltrator, to be honest. Because you two have like a... That, you've got all that survivability for so long, it's, in, it's quite incredible. Still not loving the Krogan Warlord, though, guys. I mean, yes, I, he's fun. Yes, he does a lot of damage. But he is still the biggest liability in the game. He really is. There's nothing more high risk than him. I've never feared brutes. I've never known them as an enemy to be feared until I started playing with the Krogan Warlord. Those things are vicious sink killers. And I had no idea until I played that guy. He's just so clumsy. <laughs> he's so big and clumsy and easy to sink kill. He needs to be baby. 
baby's that. He needs like a a lot of staggering going on, or he needs like a juggernaut to just hold things back for him. Um, I don't like that. I really don't like that. But I'm still going to try and get him work. Hopefully, I can get my hands on this venom shotgun, and that's going to be exactly what I hope it to be. Um, who knows? Um, what else was? What else came out? Yeah, the collector. He's really. Um, he is still good. I don't know if I'll change that build, but I would like to see some buffs done to him. What I've discovered when I was doing like a biotic death squad with some friends is that. Um, Everyone is far too more efficient than he is. His recharge speed is more of a drawback than I realised. I mean, he can set off bombs really quickly, but priming is where he really starts to get too sluggish. I couldn't keep up with my friends playing the Drell Adept and the Asari Adept and stuff like that. Um, he just can't keep up. He's too slow at what he does, so I kind of want to see a recharge buff on that guy. And um, who else was it? The Juggernauts. The Juggernaut, really. He's a bit of a monster. Um, I, you'll see my. I've made a slight tweak to him, and you'll see that eventually. Uh, you might see more tweaks from the collector, obviously, due to um, what I just said. <laughs> but yeah, that's the gameplay now, guys. I've gone off a bit, but you saw what was going on there. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Please rate, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.